In today's lesson, we are going to look at converting between units. So we've looked at kind of going, uh, looking at imperial um, and metric units um, in a previous lesson, but what we're going to look at now is just converting between units in general. Um, because again, it's often necessary to convert between different units of measurement. Right, whether you're looking or you're trying to see, um, compare things between inches and centimeters, um, or just in different types of metric and uh, imperial measurements um, as well. So we are going to look at a specific way to kind of convert between units called unit analysis. And this is a way that will allow us to basically look at any type of conversion um, or deal with any type of conversion. Because basically we're going to be looking at the relationship between two units and we're going to use that to help us convert. Um, so if we're going to look at an easy example first, we can look at something that say is an object that measures 14 centimeters long like this pencil. We want to think about, okay, well how many millimeters is that? You might be able to do that in your head right away and say, well, 14 centimeters, that's 140 millimeters. But how did you figure that out? And that process that you did in your head, that's essentially what we're going to kind of put down on paper and use that process for any type of unit conversion. And that's where we kind of come up with this unit analysis. So we're going to look at the steps below. So we have 14 centimeters equals something in millimeters, right? We want to make this conversion here. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply 14 centimeters by an object or by a fraction or a ratio here which we call a unit rate. And a unit rate is basically the amount per one of a unit. So in this case, we're looking at millimeters and centimeters. My unit rate is going to be basically how many millimeters are there in one centimeter. And in this case, there are 10 millimeters in one centimeter. So that's where this unit rate comes from. Right? So we're looking for a unit rate to be our fraction, and then that 10, 10 millimeters equals 1 centimeter replaces that fraction. And then when I do that multiplication, 10 centimeters times 10 millimeters equals, or and then divided by 1 equals 140. So how does this work? Well, essentially by multiplying by this unit rate, we have our centimeters multiplied by our millimeters then divided by centimeters. So by doing that, that basically cancels those units out and the value that we're left with is in millimeters. So essentially, the general form of what we're doing is basically the units we have and we're gonna multiply that by a fraction of the units we want divided by, or the denominator is the units we have, and that will give us our answer. In general though, we can also say that this portion here, this is our unit rate, right? So that is the amount per one unit. Right, the amount per one unit, the one amount per one of whatever we tend to be looking for. So we're going to use this idea to help us go through um, and answer a couple questions focusing on unit conversion. So in a few examples here, how many kilometers will I have traveled if I've walked 3,456 meters. And we do have our unit right there. Um, one kilometer equals 1,000 meters. So that's our unit rate that we're going to use. So in this case, again, we're going to start with the units we have. 3,456 meters. That's going to equal, or sorry, not equal. We're going to multiply that by our unit rate. And we want to have our units that we want on top. So in this case, we want the kilometers on top. So one kilometer divided by a thousand meters. So the units we have is on the bottom. 
And when I simplify this, my meters will cancel out. This essentially works out to 3,456 divided by 1,000, and we get 3.456 kilometers as our answer. <clears throat> For the next one, how many seconds are there in a, in a 20 minute quarter of a football game? We have our unit right here. So let's start off with what we have. We have 20 minutes. We're gonna multiply that by what we, the units we want. So in this case, it's seconds. So 60 seconds divided by the units we have, which is one minute. And this will give us our answer. And again, it's essentially going to be 20 times 60, which is 1,200 seconds. So 1,200 seconds in 20 minutes. Next one, how many inches do you have to run in a 100 yard sprint? Well, in this case, again, we're starting off with 100 yards. That's the units we have. We're gonna multiply by our unit rate and the units that we, we want are gonna be on top. So in this case, 36 inches will be on top divided by the units we have, one yard. So this works out to 300, no, sorry, not 300, 3,600 inches. So there's 3,600 inches in 100 yards. Finally, our last question is using a different type of measurement, um, which is stones. So in some places in Great Britain and Ireland and over in the UK, they use a measurement called stone to weigh things. So the dog pictured here, you can see it's a quite a large dog, weighs 15 stone. And we want to figure, okay, well, I don't know what 15 stone is. That doesn't make sense to me. I don't use that measurement. I want to convert that to pounds. So that's going to be a big, a better, give me a better sense of how much this dog actually weighs. So again, we start off with the units we have. So 15 stone. We're going to multiply that by our unit rate. And we're going to put the units we want on top. So 14 pounds or 14 LBs divided by the units we have, which is stone, so one stone. So 15 times 14 is 210 pounds. So that means that this dog weighs 210 pounds, which is quite a large dog. It's probably bigger, or <clears throat> weighs more than the girl and possibly even more than the girl and the guy combined. So along with just do, using um, unit conversions, there is common imperial conversion. And this is because the imperial system of measurement, they be, often mix um, units when, you, when they express things. So when you express your height, you're not using one unit, like you'd say 1.8 meters. You some, might use a mixture of feet and inches. I'm six foot three inches, right? It's a combination of two units or pounds and ounces, six pounds, five ounces, right? That's a combination um, rather than just saying like 6.3 kilograms or things like that. So with the imperial um, system of measurement, they do combine um, different units when expressing things. So we wanna be able to convert it all into one unit because that helps when we're dealing with um, calculations or if we have to use those actual numbers. There's nothing wrong with expressing um, something in a mixed um, measurement, you could say, using like say feet and inches. But if I'm doing any calculations, um, I want to be able to convert it just to one single unit. So when we're dealing with height, um, it's nice to know that there are 12 inches in one foot because we can use that to help us then convert. So if there's 12 inches in one foot, then there's 24 and two, 36, 48, 60, 72, 84, 98, um, or sorry, not 98, 96, 108, and 120. 
So we can use this kind of table as a quick way to figure out um, how many inches are in three feet, two inches, say. So I know three feet, I can go right to my chart. There's 36 inches in three feet, plus the two extra inches gives me 38. I'm gonna go and do one the opposite way. 75 inches is how many feet and inches combined. Well, an easy way to do it is to go to your chart and say, okay, I have six feet, which gives me 72. So I know for sure there's six feet. And if I take away the 72 inches, how many are left? Where there'll be three inches. So that means that 75 inches is basically six foot, six feet and three inches. So a different way to write it. So I'm gonna pause the video here and give you a chance to try to work through or complete the rest of the table using kind of the steps that we just went through. So coming back to our table, this is what it should look like. So again, take, a take your time, double check your answers, make sure you have um, the correct um, things filled in. And if you made some any mistakes, please just go back and check your work and see you kind of where you went wrong. So the same thing with measurements in terms of like distances and heights and lengths, like using feet and inches, the same thing in the imperial system also applies when dealing with weight measurements because they do the same thing with pounds and ounces. So they may express things or weights as a combination of pounds and ounces, right? A baby might be born and say there's six pounds and three ounces. Right? That's a combination of different units. So again, we can go through the same steps to try to convert it all to one unit. And again, we're gonna convert it basically all to the simplest one, which in this case would be ounces. So here, one pound equals 16 ounces. So again, that's kind of our unit rate conversion that we're gonna use to fill out kind of our one chart. So if there's 16, then there's 32. And there will be 48. Then if there's four pounds, 64, 80, 96, 112, and 128. And again, you could do this for any amount of pounds but just to get an idea of what you would have to do we're just going to stick to these ones so again to kind of convert four pounds three ounces well four pounds i know is 64 ounces plus the additional three gives me 67 ounces six pounds two ounces six pounds is 96 plus two equals 98 ounces and so on. I'll leave the rest there and let's look at one example where we have to go backwards. <clears throat> so 87 ounces is how many pounds and ounces in a mixed measurement? Well, I can do the same thing. Look at my table. The largest amount of pounds or, uh, or ounces up to 87 is 5 pounds. Because that gives me 80. 87 ounces minus the 80 ounces and the five pounds leaves me with seven. So 87 ounces works out to five pounds, seven ounces. And again, that's how you can convert between the two. So again, I'm gonna pause the video and give you a chance to kind of complete the table on your own using the steps that we just did. Coming back to our table, this is what it should look like. So again, double check your answers. The only one that may have been a little bit tricky may have been this last one at the bottom when we're dealing with 40 or 145 ounces because you may have said, okay, well, the highest on my table is eight pounds. So that's gotta be as close as I can get. So if you did that, you would get eight pounds. So you, did, you would have to do 145 minus 128 and you would get 17 ounces. 
you should realize then, well, 17 ounces is already more than a pound. So I can actually add one more pound in, which is where we get the nine pounds. So then nine pounds would be 144, where we minus that from 145, and we get one ounce remaining. So again, <clears throat> it, if it helps, another quick way you can do it, take the amount of ounces, divide it by 16, whatever the whole number is, use that as your number of pounds. Take that whole number, multiply it by 16 to see how many ounces that actually equals and subtract it. All right, if you did 145 divided by 16, you would get 9.0625. So we know that there's gonna be nine pounds. Do the nine times 16 gives us 144. Do the subtraction and we find out that there's one ounce left over. So when you're making those mixed um, kind of measurements, that's the way, another way you can figure it out. Let's practice looking at some mixed measurement um, kind of area or perimeter or just kind of measurement questions. So mixed unit measurement questions. So here we want to practice using the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the missing side of each triangle. So we're going to look at two different scenarios. So the only issue here is that I have two different measurements. I have 32 inches and I have four feet, one inch. I want to convert it all to one unit. So in this case, I'm going to convert them all to inches. And you want to try to convert it to the simplest one. Especially when you're dealing with the imperial system, you want to convert it to all, to all inches or to all ounces um, because it gets messy when you have a mixed one. If you could convert this to just feet and figure out, okay, four feet, one inch is what in just feet? So it would be four point something. Not 4.1, mind you, because the imperial system doesn't use um, that base 10. Um, where And what I mean by that, where if we look at centimeters and millimeters, it's 10 millimeters and one centimeter and so on. Um, so it doesn't, the imperial system doesn't use that. So when you're reducing it to simplest terms, we're trying to get one measurement. Um, I would say go to the smallest one. So in this case, inches. So 32 inches is fine. I want to convert four feet, one inch into just inches. Well, four feet, I can convert because I know f there are 12 inches in a foot. So I could use my unit conversion of four feet multiplied by 12 inches in one foot and get 48 inches plus the one additional inch, which gives me 49 inches along the bottom. Now I can use my Pythagorean theorem because I have one unit between my two lengths. So Pythagorean theorem, again, if you don't remember, please go back to the lesson. It might, it was also called sum of squares. So I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's my Pythagorean theorem. A and b represent the two legs or the two short sides. So it doesn't matter which one. So I can say a and b. And then c is my longest side or the diagonal or the hypotenuse. So in this case, a is going to be 32 plus b squared, which is 49, so 49 squared. And that's all going to equal c squared. I'm just gonna break this down step by step. So 32 squared equals 1024. 49 squared is 2,401, and that all equals c squared. I can add those up now and get 3,425, which equals c squared. And now some of you may say, okay, well, I'm done. I figured out what my units are, um, or I figured I've added it up. So that means that this length has to be 3,425 inches. Hopefully, if you say, say that to yourself, you realize, wait, that's a little bit too large. And you're right, it is too large because there is one final step that we have to do. And we always have to do it when dealing with Pythagorean theorem. 
the last step that we have to do before we get a measurement is we have to square root the number. And that gets rid of this squared here and gives us just the length. So if I square root that answer should get 58.52 is equal to my length. I am going to round this to just 59 inches is my length of this missing side. So that missing side is 59 inches long. Another scenario that I would look at is where I have to find a missing leg. Because again, the two short sides are your A and your B. This long diagonal side is your C. And you might say, okay, well, this B side looks longer than C. And you may, you, you might be fine making that assumption. It may, might not be drawn to scale. But C, the diagonal, the hypotenuse, is always across from this 90 degree angle. So we can always tell which side is C because it's always going to be across from this right angle or this little box here. So that's one way to tell which side is your hypotenuse or C. And then the other two sides are going to be A and B. Now because we're looking for a missing side length that's not our longest side, we have to change our formula a bit. So this is where it would be something like C squared minus A squared equals B squared. So rather than adding two sides together, you're going to be subtracting a small one from, a lar from the longest one. So that's why we have C squared minus A squared equals B squared. So that's the formula that we're going to be using. And again, if you didn't quite get that, please go back to the sum of squares lesson just to review. But before we can even get into that, we need to convert one of our measurements so that we have the same measurements for both lengths. <clears throat> now, in order to do that, we need to look at what unit do we want to convert to. Because we're dealing with meters and centimeters, it doesn't matter which one we convert to. We can change the centimeters one to meters or the meters to centimeters. It's whatever you're comfortable with. I'm going to convert the meters to centimeters. Maybe it's just a little bit easier. I'm going to be using less decimal numbers in the end. So I'm going to use that unit analysis. So I have 1.41 meters. I'm going to multiply that by my unit rate with what I want on top. So centimeters will be on top divided by meters. And there are 1,000, or sorry, 100 centimeters in one meter. So that's my unit rate. And when I multiply them, I get 141 centimeters. So 1.41 meters equals 141 centimeters. Now that I have the same units, I can plug it into my formula. So 141 squared minus 64 squared equals B squared. Again, I'm going to write out the full steps. You may be able to just enter that line into a calculator. So one, so 19,881 minus 4,096. I get 15,785 equals B squared. Again, remember the last step that we have to do before we can say that we have our length is we have to square root. So when we square root that, we get 125.64. And I'm going to round it to 126 centimeters. So again, I've converted my units at the beginning to all so that they're all the same. So now I can use the formula to calculate that missing length. So again, the main thing here is just being aware that when you have different units, 
you do want to convert them so that you have the same units across the board, especially when you get into doing any calculations. And even if that's using kind of the same units in terms of uh, a mixed measurement like we did saw in the imperial system, or if we're converting between actual units like we saw here. Again, we can use that kind of unit analysis, units you have multiplied by a unit rate where the units you want are on top and the units you have are on the bottom, and that will give you the conversion. Um, so again, it is a helpful skill to have, especially um, when we're in basically in, in everyday life, you're always gonna be dealing with different units and different measurements.